Final score is South 132, Washington 122. I guess I'm on camera here for a couple of seconds. I just want to say thank you to everybody who stayed through our broadcast and watched all this today. It was uh, mind-blowing for me to have an experience like this, and I can't say enough about the Boston Celtics as an organization in allowing, usually when you just retire, you, somebody gives you a little watch or something, you disappear into the uh, woodwork, and that isn't the case at all. So um, thank you, Boston. Thank you, Celtics, and uh, we'll see you for the playoffs. All right, it is Celtics Post Game Live. Tom Giles, Eddie House, and uh, no surprise, pure class there from Mike Gorman here on Mike Gorman Day. And, and I, th I thought it was just, it was a phenomenal day from top to bottom. I thought the crowd was great. You, you had the place packed during halftime as, as they, and we'll go through some of that as well. Um, obviously, Scow with the, the interview and the tributes and everything else, but that was, I just thought, a, a great day all the way around. And you had know, the Celtics win on top of it. That's the main thing. They got the W on top. Of, uh, it sent Mike out the right way in the regular season. Um, nothing would have been worse than, you know, all of that jubilation, all of that joy and the tributes and everything, and we didn't pull it off. But I think that the guys came out. They played um, spirited basketball. Uh, Svi came out there, jumping out the gym, caught a lob. Peyton Pritchard. Back-to-back -back nights with 30 points in the third quarter, set a new career high. Um, Sam Hauser playing uh, good basketball. I thought that when you looked at what they did, you know, the spacing out there and the way they competed, that's Celtics brand of basketball right there. Yeah, and uh, obviously it, it, all that happened around everything else uh, for Mike Gorman today. And I know that you were down on the floor for the halftime tribute and, you know, go through some of the, the video here as we'll show it to you a second time. Love the Mike champ behind us as well. This crowd's been awesome today. But, uh, you know, you had Wick Grosbeck, Steve Pagliuca there with Bill Bridgen presenting these gifts to uh, Mike. You had the shadow box, the, the banner, as well as the, the Rolex. And um, also the, the broadcast table that you'll see. The, but as you're sitting down there, what, what was that like as you're watching it all? Well, Abby was sitting right next to me, and she was holding it together until Mike started talking about Tommy and... and she got a little misty. I looked over and she wasn't misty eyed. She was crying. And I was like, it's okay, Abby. It's, it's, it's okay. But she was, uh, she was emotional. Everybody was emotional down there. Um, I mean, nobody more deserving than Mike Gorman. I mean, everybody talks about what he's done for 43 years, but a great, a great person. All right, there's the Mike uh, Gorman broadcast table. Meanwhile, here's Scal and Mike with that interview at halftime. I love this guy. Love this guy. How about this, huh? This is amazing. All day has been amazing. You guys have been just great. And thank you to the ownership for doing this. The, the, the stuff that Mike has experienced so far has been just second to none. Now you get a chance to talk. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Yeah, hey, I'm ready. All right, so as you guys know, Mike grew up in Dorchester. And just like, talk us through the journey from growing up loving basketball and having this job and doing this for 43 years for your favorite basketball team. Well, I think it's probably a lot of fathers will identify with this. Um, you, if you have a son, when he gets to about eight years old, anywhere in New England here, he has one of two choices. He can go play basketball or he can go be a hockey player. You couldn't do both. Um, so because I couldn't skate, I immediately went and be, tried to become a basketball player. And I wasn't all that good at that either. But what it did was it, it lit a fire inside me about a team we had here in Boston at the time who went out and they won world championships every single year. And I'd find those games, sometimes you had to go late at night at 11.30 to find a championship game, but you could find it if you wanted. And through the years, I just became more and more a Celtic fan as time went by. I never thought I would end up here, that's for sure. Um, but thank you. But uh, I have, and it's, uh, again, it's that one decision you made when you were about 12 years old, you decided, okay, um, and I, um, I actually had a promising career until I discovered I had no left hand, and then it, it went downhill. From <laughs> happens to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, obviously you've spent so many years working with Tommy. First of all, how did you meet Tommy, and then how did this thing all start, and what was it like working with him? I'm at Channel 12 down in Providence, and we somehow inherited three Providence college games that we could do. So I'm at this meeting, and I said, I'll do the games, because nobody at the station knew about it, could do a game. And they said, well, we'll go find some ex-Providence college guy to do the color. And I said, why don't we try to get Tommy Heinsohn to do the color? 
And they said, ah, Tommy's not going to want to come down to Rhode Island to do some foolish game down here. I said, well, how do we know unless we try? And here's where this becomes a different time. I call a 411 information in Boston and ask for the number of the Boston Celtics. I get it. I call the Boston Celtics. This lady answers the phone. She says, Boston Celtics. I said, yeah, Tom Heinsohn, please. And she goes, gee, you know, Tommy just left, but I'll give you his home phone, because I know he's headed for home. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. Then. So um, I called Tommy, and I make a proposal to him. I say, we'd like to have you do color. And he says, uh, why don't we have lunch? We should talk this over with lunch. He said, where are you calling from? And I said, Providence, Rhode Island. And he said, uh, OK. And he gives me the name of a place that's about three minutes from Tom's house, and it's about 50 miles from where I live. Um, so I show up. We have lunch to make it short. Um, he takes a look at the contract I had and I had the per game fee. He crossed that out and doubled it and put another number on top, looked at me and said, Mike, how's your health insurance looking situation now? <laughs> and so an hour later, I walk out of that restaurant with a signed contract from Tommy Heinsohn for twice the money we want to offer him and a $10,000 life insurance policy. <laughs> he was always selling, right? He was always closing. He was he always closing. closing. <laughs> but that opened the door for me and introduced me to just a remarkable personality. Um, I will get misty if I try to talk about Tom. I think of him every day. Um, I just... <laughs> Thank you, whoever that was up there. But, I mean, right down to people say, how'd you develop your style as a broadcaster? And many of you have heard this story before, but believe me, it's true. And Dick Leip, who has been a lifeline for me forever, uh, can back me up on this. But um, I walked into the old pontoon that was in front of uh, the old hanging off the first balcony, the old Boston Garden. And I walk in and, and I get my notes spread out in front of me and I got, I got the color coded as to who scored this and who did that. And Chuck Person, I remember, was the opposition on the other side. It holds the notes about him. And I've got them all spread out and then Tommy walks in and he's got a cigarette going and he goes, what's all this blank? And I said, uh, those are my notes. And he said, not anymore. And he reaches down, and he covers him up with a little ball and throws him off the balcony. You know? And I'm, I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, what the? You know? Um, and he looked me right in the eye and he said, we don't need notes. We're going to talk about what we see out there. And that's what you did. Yeah. You know, we did for 39 years. Most memorable call and memorable moment. I know they're different. Memorable call has to be Eastern Conference Finals for the um, after the Celtics had just had the ball go in, I think it was off Larry Bourne's leg, and there was only one, two seconds left in the game, and they were obviously going to lose. All Isaiah had to do was get the ball in bounds, and he threw it in, and Bird, if you watch the tape, it's remarkable, because Larry was moving before Isaiah actually threw the ball in. He had made a guess in his head, it's going to go here, I'm going to be there first. He was, he deflected it to Dennis Johnson, who laid it in on the cut and Celtics ended up winning the game. That call gets played everywhere, and I have to thank a guy named Jeff Grice, who is uh, the guy who puts together all our uh, video stuff, because after the play, when the play actually happened, I said, and a foul, and there was no foul. And Jeff just little razor blade to the tape right there, and all of a sudden the foul was gone. And um, yeah, that's my favorite call. The other one, I don't know if we want to get into that other one, do we? No, no. What about when Pierce hit that shot in Harrington's face? <laughs> buried it. <laughs> Paul likes that, Joe. Oh, I like <laughs> he really that. Does. Too. Well, Mike, mm -hmm. I know how much all these people mean to you. Is there any last words you want to give to all the people? Yeah. Um, You know the song from Cheers where they say you want to go where everybody knows your name? Um, that's what made the TD Garden for me. It's a place I could go where everybody knew my name and the relationship I've been able to develop with everybody who works in this building, not opposing teams, but everybody who works in this building has just been, that's the biggest part of it for me because um, just to have, to see all the guys as I walk in, see Jimmy and Jackie from security and I could go on and on with all the guys. Um, it's just been wonderful. So I'll say that, and, and to the team, I just want to say, go, go win this thing, will you please? Just go win it. Celtics fans, let's hear it one more time for the voice 
Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm.